The next tooth that we are going to uh, make a radiograph for is the lower canine. Uh, canine, as we said uh, uh, in previous videos, should be uh, done, uh, rad radiographs of the canine should be done in, uh, separately so that because of their unique position inside the oral cavity. So, uh, our target tooth is the canine. So you expose or reflect the lip so that you can see your tooth. And again, you look inside so that you would see what uh, 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 the, the, you see the uh, anatomical areas that are related to this tooth. And then <coughs> your sensor will be, see, exposure side held in this direction. You reflect the lip and then you just hold it in this way and try to See, just follow the tooth exactly so that the canine will be in, in the exact, exact center of the, uh, of the uh, sensor, okay? And then, again, you make it extending two millimeters above the incisal margin of the canine so that you will guarantee that the um, uh, uh, whole length of the tooth is captured in the image and you will, uh, 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 of course, I don't, I'm, I'm just trying to see those two millimeters extending over here should be even. We don't want uh, a tilted film or a slanted film. Uh, all what we need is that, relatively speaking, uh, because we're not going to measure the two millimeters exactly, but we try to we d we try to avoid the extremes. Like in, in a case like this, definitely you will not catch up the. Uh, uh, you will not get the apex of the uh, image of the apex of the tooth. All what you need to do is that you have to uh, uh, keep this this distance over here two millimeters, so that uh, your uh, 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 radiograph will show the uh, uh, apex of the tooth. Next, after you secure the sensor in the uh, in, inside the oral cavity, you just hold the uh, sensor properly and guide your patient so that the patient will be uh, uh, holding the film or supporting the film on the, cana uh, on the crown of, the, uh, of that tooth. We don't want to get uh, the patient, or, uh, uh, the patient uh, uh, going down so that he will uh, uh, you know, cause um, uh, 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 bending of the of the sensor, which will affect the image afterwards. Most of the of the patients, when you told them to, when you tell them to support, they will press very hard. You know, those sensors are very light in weight, uh, but 20 grams or 22 grams only. So you don't need this huge force to support. It's just a matter of preventing the slippage. Uh, of the sensor from its location. So tell the, your patient in advance is that you don't need to press very hard. It's just a matter of supporting a tooth, uh, supporting the sensor in place so that one, uh, during the exposure it will not move. Okay, after the sensor is uh, positioned in, uh, in its proper place, uh, we will again now start with directing our beam and the beam, our point of entrance, will be a line extending from the ala of the nose, which will pass through the upper canine. If you extend it downwards, exactly it will be on the lower canine. So my point of entrance will be through the a line or with a line extended from the ala of the nose, whether it's a right tooth or a left tooth. Okay? So this is the point of entrance. Next, I will adjust the vertical angulation, and this is done by one, directing the beam perpendicular on the tooth, Next, directing the beam perpendicular on the, uh, on the uh, uh, sensor, okay? Okay? And then directing the, uh, redirecting the uh, cone uh, to be perpendicular on the bisector that has resulted between the angle, in the angle between the tooth and the film, okay? By so doing, you get an angle of minus 30. Again, we're working here in the lower jaw. Of course, as I said in the uh, 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 other videos, the film position might differ. We don't want to stick to these numbers. So the film position might differ, uh, differ from one patient to another. So this angle will differ. I would advise that you, that you follow this. 
perpendicular on tooth, perpendicular on film, and between those two uh, extremes. Uh, uh, if you want to further check by the angles, uh, uh, there is no harm in this, okay? So, uh, with the vertical angulation adjusted now, uh, the, remain, uh, the other thing to be, uh, there are two other things to check. One is the horizontal angulation and the th fourth is the coverage. So, horizontal angulation, this is the buccal surface of the tooth. I will simply make the x-ray perpendicular on the buccal surface of the tooth. If you come from this direction or this direction, you will definitely end up with a, a, a overlapping margins. So, you simply, with the uh, vertical angulation uh, fixed, you will direct the beam so that it will be perpendicular on the buccal surface. This will make the x-ray pass in between the teeth and you will end up with a, a separated contact uh, points of the, uh, of the uh, images of contact points. Now the fourth thing, which is the last thing that you should take care of, is the uh, coverage, complete coverage uh, of, the, uh, of the sensor. And again, you just look uh, at the upper margin of the, uh, or the showing margin, or the extending, or the two millimeters which are extending over the incisal margin. You just make it flush with the with the with the cone, so that you will avoid the cone cut or and assure the complete coverage of the of the tooth. Okay, you expose. Tell your patient not to move after exposure. Reverse one. Hold the film, hold the patient's finger, remove uh, away from, uh, from the field, and then you will just simply take the film or the sensor out of the oral cavity and the exposure is done.